Pluto. Now, let us suppose, okay, let, let, let me give you a little illustration. I keep falling off the push-up wagon, but years ago, uh, over here in the auditorium, we had a youth rally, and we ran out of whatever, and so somehow somebody came up with the idea of a push-up contest. And so people started doing push-ups. Well, we had one fellow, one pastor, used to be over here in Staten Island, he had been one of Merrill's marauders. Now, if you want, if you like warfare, and, and I know that Michelle really loves it, okay, uh, you want to want to Google Merrill's marauders. And it's fascinating. It's what I call the deep penetration unit. They went back behind the Japanese lines in Burma, and they caused all kind of mischief. And um, so he was a tough, um, one tough hombre. The guy was like 68, and he did 50 push-ups, which is impressive. How many of you can do 50 push-ups? See, I told you it's impressive. <laughs> so I decided that when around, sometime around this age, I wanted to be able to do 50 push-ups. Well, a couple of years ago, I got up to 31, and then I fell off the wagon. Okay, but if you if you want to do anything, whether it's your, uh, something around your house, uh, something relative to your body, something relative to your spiritual well-being, you must pinpoint. Pinpoint. And I am of the measure, I am of the studied opinion that can, we can use the principle found in cha uh, Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 to specifically target a particular part of ourselves of our spiritual situation. All right, so first thing we must surrender, give ourselves as a living sacrifice. The second link, which says, and be not conformed to this world. This is what the world is trying. Remember, our, our, we talked about this. The Bible says that we are influenced to sin by the world, the flesh, and the devil. Now, as we said last week, the world is not the cosmos. The cosmos. Uh, we say it in English, cosmos, in Greek it's cosmos. That is the planet, the world. It is the word ion. It is the word we get eon from. It's this present age. In, verse, in Matthew chapter 28, verses 11, uh, excuse me, Matthew 28, uh, it says, and lo, I am with you even unto the end of the world. Well, it's, the, it's really the age. The age. Now, that's not necessarily a bad translation. It's just that we don't talk that way. We, would, we wouldn't say it that way today. All right? So, it's the age. This present evil age. And what does this age want to do? It wants to conform us to its image, which is the which is antagonistic to what God is trying to do. He is trying to conform us to the, to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. All right, now, you have in your life things that should be there that are not, and you have in your life things that are there that ought not be. And I'm not picking on you. Me too. All right? That is the very nature of our human condition. Now, the day you got saved, God didn't roll out a list of 483 things and say, hey, but snap two. No. He is dealing with us about particular things. Now, as I like to, like to say, there are two ways that sins are eliminated or minimized for our lives, from our lives. One is we grow. We grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, the word knowledge here does not mean simply, I know. That is to really know. Uh, husbands, you should know your wife better than anybody else. Wives, you should know your husband better than anyone else. Even their mother, even their father, even their sister, or their brother. All right, you should know them. It, this is an experiential kind of knowledge. Now, this is done by picking up little pieces over a period of time. It's we are to know 
the Lord Jesus. And we do this through, when we put this with life experience. All right. So we're to grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're become, as Romans chapter 8 says, we're to be conformed. As it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, we're to be changed from image to image, from glory to glory, even into His image. And when we are in God's presence, we will be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is, 1 John 3. So, so don't be conformed to this world. But everything in this world is having is having an influence or potentially influencing our thinking. <clears throat> um, give you an example. Radical feminism. Radical feminism. Uh, back, I was reading an article uh, several weeks ago. It said that back in the '60s. Those the, the real thinkers began to figure out that class warfare wasn't going to work. It wasn't working. Okay. Now you would think it would work because you see, everybody wants to be rich, or at least a huge portion. Now a lot of these people is nothing more than wishful thinking. Now what's the difference between wishful thinking and something more substantive? Well, you, you know, you would like to be rich, but you're not willing to pay the price for it. Okay? It's like over in Flatbush, 50, 50, about 40, 50 years ago, uh, people started moving up from the Caribbean. It was kind of a funny thing. That used to be a very Jewish neighborhood. They moved to Boca Raton, uh, all those places down there, and, and, and it's just kind of like they suck the Jews out of Flatbush and put them in Florida, okay? Well, that created the vacuum, so people started to move in. Well, who moved in? You know, the neighborhoods are always changing. So, who moved in? A bunch of West Indians. Now, these people came up here, and they looked around, and they said, wow, a lot of opportunities. It's like my, I, I was, we're, we're redoing our, our the kitchen for our tenant. I got to send you the picture. It looks, it looks pretty good, all right. And um, they had a guy come to measure for the cabinets, and he, his name was Simon. Uh, I had detected it in accent. I said, "Hey, Simon, where are you from?" He said, oh, "I'm from Israel." I said, "Where?" He said, "Near Tel Aviv." Tel Aviv was founded in 1909. It's called. It, it means well in the spr uh, 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 spring. Uh, hip Tell is a hill, hill of the spring, is what it means, Tel Aviv. And actually it's a biblical name. V is the new B. You look in Ezekiel and it's B. Uh, and they don't say Jacob over there, they say Jacob. And there's this a V instead of a B, alright? So anyway, uh, he's, we were talking, he said, I came over here 45 years ago, he says this is the best country in the history of the world. Okay? So he, 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 these people came up here and they, Flatbush was crummy. So what they started doing? They started working. Not one job, because they didn't make that much money. Two jobs, three jobs, four jobs. And they kept working, they kept working, they saved their money, they lived modestly, and what did they do? They went out to Elmont, Franklin Square, and they bought a house. Mm -hmm. I don't know why you'd want to buy a house in Franklin Square and Elmont, the, the taxes are $1,000 a month. Anyway, they wanted it, so they went after it. Now, you know, there are a lot of Christians that have wishful thinking. We would like to be like the Lord Jesus. We would like to be, we love it, but what are you doing about it? What are you doing about it? If you're just wishing for it, it's wishful thinking. What are you doing to change what you are to be more like the Lord Jesus? All right, so here he says... Don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We talked last week, the word transform is a very big word. It's in etymology, no, entomology. Etymology is the study of, this, of the uh, origin and development of words. Etymo entomology is the study of, it's bugology, okay? It's the study of insects and that sort of thing. All right, now, I had a teacher that eventually, when I was in high school, eventually got his PhD in entomology. 
Hmm. Well, you know, you got to, somebody's got to do it, right? Okay. But anyway, um, it, it's the caterpillar becoming the butterfly. Now that's dramatic. That's huge. That's, that is a multi-legged, fuzzy, elongated worm, all along, all worms elongated, are they not? Becoming a graceful butterfly with those big wings. You, if you didn't know that that used to be that, or that that will become that, you, you would never believe it. And God wants to change us so much that people will look back and couldn't imagine that we used to be that. And that includes even our Christian life. And how do, how do we do that? By the renewing of your mind. Meditation on God's Word renews the mind. What does it mean to renew? What, your body's constantly renewing. Every day, millions, maybe billions of cells in your body die, and millions are created. Your cells divide, and they divide, and they divide. And we are constantly being renewed. When you go to sleep at night, part of the idea is that in the morning you will be renewed. You need to sleep. If you don't sleep, you it's really hard to be healthy. There is a point at which they say anything less than seven years and seven hours a night shortens your life. I'm looking forward to that because I rarely get seven hours, okay? Can you do? All right, now, so we meditate real quickly. Meditate one word at a time. Take John 3, 16, for example, for God. Think about God. For God so, so what? So much. So love. Love the world so much. So I'm in the world. The world. Talk about the world. It's not the world, the planet. It's the world, the people. Think and take a Think through each one of those words. You can do that. Personalize. Put, use the pronoun. For God so loved me that He gave His only begotten Son that if I would believe. What does believe mean? Going back to this. Believe doesn't mean what most people think it does. Believe here, and, and usually in the New Testament, believe means trust. You see, everybody who thinks you're going to heaven is trusting in something. Every one of them. They're trusting in their church. They're trusting in their baptism. They're trusting in, oh, I'm a good person. Oh, yeah? God's got a little problem with that. Okay? God says you aren't. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Now, you don't have your argument with me. Your argument was God. How about this one? This is over. Here's, here's a verse you've probably never heard um, used in this. Let's see. It says, for, verse, this is Romans 6.20. For when you were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. You know what that means? You had none. All our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. That's a bloody rag. You know what? You, you know, you, you, you buy a pound of hamburger, okay? And so you, uh, you, you take the hamburger out of the package and, and, you, and you put the thing in the... In the Waste paper uh, where you put your garbage. You know what? If you don't get that out of there pretty soon, it's going to stink. Mm -hmm. Why is it going to stink? Because blood corrupts faster than any part of our bodies. Mm -hmm. It'll stink. So our righteousnesses are as to God as filthy rags. And hey, what's that going to get you? What do you do with the filthy rag? You want to get rid of it. You know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a great believer in rags. I use rags for a lot of things. If you work on my car, I need rags, I need this and I need rags. But you don't want a rag like that. It's trash. You want to get rid of it. It's repulsive. God says that's the good stuff. The meaning. What does it mean? And then what does it mean to me? Go down here. 
how to apply it. Think about how, how can I apply this to myself. You know, we, all, we always want to apply it to somebody else. I preached a sermon many, many years ago when I was at Bay Ridge. And uh, this guy said to his wife, Wow, he was preaching to you today. <laughs> Actually, I was, but I didn't, want to, I didn't want to admit it, okay? How does this apply to me? How does this verse, what, 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 is, what, what part of this, what is here that I should incorporate into my life? Now, look, folks, I understand. I wasn't born yesterday. I got saved in 1961. You can't apply everything in every sermon to yourself. You, you, you got to work, but you, we ought to all be working on something. There's something. You don't ever get so mature spiritually. Remember that 483 things that God didn't roll out? Well, I don't know where you are on the list, but I got to tell you, you didn't get to the end. You didn't get to the end. So what does it mean? Relationship between verses or passages. How does this relate to that? This is just real quick for you. Synonyms. Is there another word we can use? Now, what's the virtue of that? Well, as the longer you've been saved, the more you are subject to reading something and not really seeing it. But if you put a different word in there, a word, a synonym, what is the synonym? It means the same thing. You know, when, when they translated the Bible, they didn't have to, in many cases, they didn't have to use that particular word. They could have used a different one, but they chose to use that one. So if I plug in a different word, sometimes the light goes on. I never saw it that way before. Let me give you an example of that. We think of patience. I have to be patient with other people. No. The Bible never uses the word patient when it's, when it's spilled with, with reference to God. God does not have to be patient. Patience has to do with circumstances. Yesterday, Ruth got caught in traffic. She needed some patience. Well, she was blessed because she had a bunch of ladies in the car with her, and so they were just, I did not that talking to her. It made it a little easy, okay? I don't need patience with you. You don't need patience with me. Okay. The biblical word is long suffering. What is long suffering? You know, you guys speak some German, right? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit, okay. Well, the Germans rarely make new words, okay? What they do is they string two words together. And it's kind of handy because you, you don't need definitions because if you know what both words mean, you know what they're, they're talking about. For example, in World War II, they made this handheld device called a Panzerfaust. Now, Panzer is armor, tanks, armored cars, that sort of thing. Faust means to. Do you know what Faust means? I, I used to. I used to, too. <laughs> <laughs> I have to think about it. For you have to think about it. I'll let you know if it comes to it. Do what? Faust. Faust. No, the whole word. Panzerfaust. It was an armor. Well, it, it, I, it, I was told it means punch, but then I said it to a German guy, he says, no, it means something else, and I forget what the something else means, okay? But, oh, he, oh, I got it. I got a better one. In German is Uber. It has nothing to do with the cars. 
Uber means over. Over. Unter means under. The Germans call the Jews Untermenschen. Menschen is human. Uh, a Jew will say to you if he wants something from you, I'll be a mensch. In other words, be a person. All right? So an Untermenschen is a subhuman. An Übermenschen is a superhuman. Okay? The Germans said that they were Übermenschen. They were supermenschen. Super Supermen, okay? The Jews were untermenschen and therefore subject to being eradicated. I thought the Slavs were the Russians, you know. Russians are Slavs, except for the ones that are not. But, you know, a lot of the, the ones they dealt with in the Western part later, they, they met the Mongolians and some of the others that were not Slavs. And, but, uh, so, the Poles were untermenschen because they were Slavs and so on. All right. Now, so you put two words together. Long suffering, what does it mean? What does long suffering mean? Patience. Suffering for a long time. Suffer for a long time. It's put it long suffering means suffer long. Okay. Now we need to suffer long for people. We need we need patience, God doesn't, but God does have long suffering. Keep you and I can't imagine how God must suffer with our unfaithfulness, with our lack of zeal, our lack of fervor, our lack of perspective, and so on. Some of which is excusable, but much of which is not. So, synonyms. Similes and metaphors. We talked about this. These are rich places to, these are rich ways to meditate on God's Word. And what happens? Oh, I mentioned feminism. We had three waves of feminism. Okay, the first one was, was the, the suffragettes and all that sort of thing. The second one was in the 60s. The third one is now. Okay, and the, the, the feminism is not just for women. Okay, uh, we, we have an experience expression today, woke. Mm -hmm. uh, woke is, is, is in the, uh, the idea when you were asleep before. Okay. Now, I will acknowledge that down through my life there have been times when I did not understand uh, certain things. Okay. But this has really gotten crazy. Uh, the, the first wave of feminism is women should vote. Uh, fine. Personally, I don't think everybody should vote. I think you should own property. Now, I said that when I didn't own any. I'm not saying it now. You say, that's, that's terrible. No, because you don't have any skin in the game. So, what would people do? Go out and buy property so they could vote. Okay? What we have now is we have a, 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 an, under, an underclass of people who vote for the candidate that will give them the most. Well, you know, we, 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 uh, we get upset when a legislature sells his vote. Well, you sold yours. You're as slimy as he is, or she. Used to all be these. Now we've got a few. We've got more and more she's in there. Well, what's wrong with third wave feminism? Well, third wave feminism is anti male. No, I'm not. I'm not bothered terribly by this. I'm a big enough man that I can I can deal with it. The trouble is that the law is on their side. It, 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 secondly, we have feminized societies. Now, society. Now, folks, look. I love I love women. Okay. I think they're great. But you do not want a feminized society. You do not. You ladies do not. You do not want it. You think they think they do. I can tell, tell you another thing. Women have no place in battle. Now, if a woman like, you know, the, the, the Russians had the partisans, the Israelis started out with them in their army. They're still in the army, but they don't go to the front. Okay? And, and those, those, uh, those chicks can fire the rifles, okay? Uh, when I was there, I was going to ask one about what is it, you know, about it, but she almost spoke Hebrew, so I don't know. All right. 
Now, you don't want a feminized society. Okay? Now, the, the, the role of women in society is to soften it, is to make it more relational. But if they take over, and that's what's going on now, folks, you don't live here. You don't be part of it. First of all, it gets real cat fighting. Real cat fighting. And you know what? Most women don't want to work in a totally female or, uh, workplace. Why? <coughs> well, you know, women love to talk about men being immature. There are a lot of women that are still nine years old. They're still nine years old. I I'm not going to talk to you if you if you're her friend. Now, they may not say it, but it's still there. It's still there. Women civilize men, and when men take claws out of women. Uh, in, the, in, in a workplace, it's not usually pretty if it's all women. One man, just one man in there, and they will behave so much better. Now, women have are very advantageous. I mean, you, you, I, I used to get this, Joel used to get this catalog and they had uh, a, a hunting lodge with just all men in there. The place looked like a disaster. It had all, you know, there were all kinds of bad things going on there because it had become a, uh, a man cave on steroids. But and what has happened in the last 30 years or so? You know, men were always bad sexually, okay? But now women have become so. And that is a new dynamic, and it ain't pretty for either one. For neither one. And we, we talked about the uh, inability to bond among women that are had multiple partners. All right. And we have this woke society. That's, that's our new world, folks. Uh, it, it, it is crazy. I, I was at the uh, polling site last summer, and there was this guy, and I don't know, somehow we got to talking, and he told me he was 75. The black fellow. And I said, wow. I said, I would have never believed that. And I said, well, you know, my, my wife used to have a black uh, director of nursing, she's a nurse, and she commented on her skin and, and, and the, the, the black lady's skin, and she said, yeah, honey, black don't crack. And we, he and I both laughed about it, because man, I mean, really, it, I, it's not fair. You got, you got enough melanin in your skin, you don't wrinkle. Well, this white lady standing, standing there jumped all over me. I just paid the guy a compliment. But you know what? The, the, the third wave feminist wants to tell us that there's no difference. There's no, there's no difference between men and women until they want there to be a difference. Mm -hmm. And that's literally the way it is. And they get to call the shots. Because you see, white males have dominated society for millennia and now it's our turn. And we got a lot of scores to settle. Toxic. Was they? Toxic femininity. Well, toxic. Yeah, well, I, I, I love that. I love, I saw a picture. I saw a picture of the men's storm in Normandy and it said toxic masculinity. Hey, ladies, we'll let you do it next time. Hmm. We'll let you storm the beaches next time. That my brother was a flight instructor. He said, you know, the, uh, the female p pilots would be crying. <laughs> yeah. They'd be crying. Like, what do you do? The girl gets to practicing to fly a jet fighter, and they start crying. Well, most of them don't have the, they don't have, they're not incapable. They, they can't, their body can't, their body cannot stand 4Gs. Well, you know, it's like I said this. 
Why would any woman want to be a third-rate man when she could be a first-rate woman? Exactly. I mean, come on. Look, 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 look folks. This all, this whole thing, all of all of this baloney that we've been that we're seeing in our society goes back to Genesis one mm -hmm. and two. You see, in Genesis one and two, God said He created man, and He created woman. Now remember in Genesis 1 it says in the evening and the morning of the first day, the evening and the morning of the second day, and so on. So and that's why Jews begin their Passover on Friday evening instead of Saturday morning, or Saturday at midnight. Okay. So the evening so he created probably what happened is on what we would call Friday, uh, Thursday afternoon, God created the male. And so he said, okay, Adam, name all the animals. So he named all the animals, and in the process he noticed that there wasn't one that was, there was not a female like him, not meat for him, fitting, okay? So God caused a great sleep to fall, to, to come upon Adam, and God took, literally, it, it, he took a chunk out of his side. And when he woke up, he looks over there and he says, wow, the first pickup line, where have you been all my life? <laughs> okay? This was all, this was a hundred years worth of Christmas mornings rolled into one. There she was. Women, you have, you have great, great power and influence and abilities and because of what you are. What in the name of the world would you want to throw that out and try to be a man? The first woman fighter pilot died. Why did she die? Because women weren't meant for that. You will find very, very rare exceptions. They're not meant for that. The, the, I, I read an article one time by a fellow that, that got to go up as a passenger in a fighter plane, and he threw up in his helmet. Why? The, 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 what, the, the punishment your body takes in fly, flying a jet plane is incredible. It's just incredible. Women aren't as strong as men. No, you can look, you can find women that are as strong as a man, but the average woman's not as strong as the average man. I could teach you ladies how to pick up 200 pounds. I could do it. I could teach the men to pick up 350. Same mechanics. Can't, they can't. They just can't do it. Why? Because they weren't meant to do it. God designed women for a for a, a particular role, and they're good at it. And He designed men for a particular role, and they're good at it. And when a man tries to take the role of a woman, in some cases, you know, I, you know, when I was growing up, my mother taught me how to keep house. She taught me how to iron. No, thankfully, I don't have to do that very often. She taught me how to cook. She taught me how to wash clothes. She taught me how to clean. She taught me how to do simple sewing. I can sew a button on. I can, I can do simple things and sew. She taught me those. But my wife's way better at it. And it's not just practice. Now, are there men that, women that are good at certain, yes, and some of them are exceptional, but they are the, they are the exception rather than the rule. But the biggest problem is the total rejection of creation and of design for purpose, particular purpose. You are designed, the male was designed for certain things, the female was designed for certain things, and it goes way beyond just physical. Women are much better nurturers. And men are goal setters. Now women, there are women that set goals. I understand that. But there's this thing you should watch. 
it's a woman's got nails sticking out of her head. It's, it's, it's only like three minutes of watching, okay? And so the woman's got this nail sticking out of her head, out of her and she's talking to her husband, and her husband's basically saying, look, I get that nail out of your head. No, she doesn't want to talk about getting the nail out of her head. She wants to talk about how it feels. And so she talks, so, so he shuts up, and he listens, and finally he commensurates in some way, and so she's so happy. So she tries to, they, she tries to embrace, it's the thing, and then he, he wants to take the nail out, she's mad at him, okay? Now, something occurred to me, you ladies listen, something occurred to me. When a man talks to his wife about a problem, what do you think he wants? He wants her to solve it. We don't just share our feelings to feel better. Now she thinks because he shared his feelings and she has listened uh, in a wonderful way that she has fulfilled her role. No, she didn't. The woman talks to the man. She doesn't want him to solve the problem. She wants him to feel. Okay. Now I'm not saying that's bad. I'm just saying that's what it is. Okay. And so when the man talks to his wife, he doesn't want her to feel. He wants her to do something about it. She doesn't want him to do anything. He wants her to do something about it. So the male wants to, the 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 the, the, the um, default for the male is to fix the problem. Default for the female is to listen. Now, if he does what his default is, she's not happy. If she does what, and this this is the part that nobody ever said. If she does her part, he's not happy because he he, he came with a problem. He wants to do something with the problem, and she she just thinks because she's heard and listened and. Can, and, and with him that she's fulfilled what he wants. No, she hasn't. And so she fixes the problem that hasn't done. All right, now, so the renewing of her mind. Now, what I'm saying, what I'm trying to say here is take this renewing of your mind and apply it to a particular thing. Go to God's Word, memorize the Scriptures, meditate on those Scriptures, do the different things that you can do with those particular Scriptures, and what and you keep at it, and you keep at it, and you keep at it. Remember when you were a kid, and you went, you went to like a door frame, and you stood up really, you took your shoes off, and you stood up really, really tall, and you know, you stretched yourself, and they took a pencil and they marked on the door frame. Six months later, you go back, and you do the very same thing, and you, you know, you in your you, in the depths of your being, you hope you have grown. I, as I look back now, growing up was kind of a bummer. Because when you get to be an adult, you're responsible. You got stuff you got to do. You got to pay the bills. You got to make the money. You got to solve the problem. But anyway, what what, what were we doing? You you don't. When children grow, they don't ratchet. I used to have a car, and you you, you hook the, the the bump and you hook the um, the jack on the bumper. That's back when bumpers had something to them. If you did that today, you'd rip the bumper off. And then you had a little thing like this. It, it was your tire tool. And it came out, and you do like this, and you hear a click, 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 and you would like raise the car little increments of maybe a quarter of an inch. Well, we don't grow that way. We grow, in, you can't even see the growth. It took the six months to go back, and maybe you'd grown that much, depending on what you know, reach puberty. You, know, you, you, you almost can watch the growth. We grow in grace and knowledge for it. We're changed, where our mind is renewed. What, what happens? Instead of thinking the way the world thinks, instead of thinking the way the flesh thinks, and sort of instead of thinking the way the devil thinks, we think the way that God thinks. And over a period of time, you see, you have we have underlying attitudes and ways of thinking, and those affect our behavior in dramatic ways. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your goodness. May we
benefit, or may we be doers. You want us to do something. You want us to see changes in our behavior because of changes in our thinking. Out of the abundance of the heart are the issues of life. And we make the Word of God, we do to deliver the Word of God into our heart by meditating on it and letting it change us. In Jesus' name.